Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Q&A show on Inside the Birds platform, YouTube channel. I am one of your co-hosts, Jason Avant. I'm here with my main man, Quinn Michael Q. Say what's up to everybody. What's going on, everybody? Back at it again. Excited to be here, man. We are ready to roll. The <laughs> birds go crashing down at home in a butt whooping for the ages 42 to 19. A lot of smack talk. And the Niners backed it up. Before we get into that, make sure we say thank you to everybody that's responsible for the show. Um, James and Josh and Joel uh, and Jeff and Adam and everybody. Um, thank you guys for um, making this show special. And all, to all the fans, make sure you see um, email your questions to inside the birds at gmail.com, inside the birds at gmail.com. And thank you guys for tuning in faithfully. We appreciate you. And to Adam and Jeff again, thank you for everything that you're doing. Um, thanks. All right, Q. Let's get going, man. You start us off today. Yeah, I didn't get. Uh, first of all, first of all, but let's 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 start on a good note. Congratulations to the Maize and Blue, Michigan, oh. making it to the college football playoff. Yeah, right? thank you. I appreciate. I know there's a lot of a lot of people, a lot of talk over the yeah. weekend about teams that got in and not, but you guys got in. Congratulations, there. Yeah, I appreciate right. that. So, feel bad. Starting a good note, me, but yeah. <laughs> yeah all right so yeah let's get into it man um well what we got first question um so the eagles they did i guess they did much better against the uh heavy motion and the 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 formation diverse teams like miami and uh, the rams what do you think that the san francisco um, offense did differently from those teams that caused the problems for the eagles defense yeah, so before before we get into that, I'm going to ask you something. Before we get into that part, there's losses and then there's butt kickings. <laughs> oh, full view, full perspective before we get into the questions. What's your initial thoughts of this butt whooping? This is my initial thought. This is that type of butt whooping when your mom tells you to do the dishes for the sixth time and you're still in your room <laughs> playing video games. And she come in and she get the belt and she say, didn't I tell you to get it? And like she in there beating you and, and stuttering <laughs> and you and you can't really get the cry out. You just, <laughs> that, that <laughs> they, they beat the hell out of us. And it was embarrassing, but, but they, but they beat the, the, yeah, they, they, they got us good. So that's my initial. And and there's a lot of stuff we're gonna get into. And I want to forewarn you, this won't be the most comfortable show for you guys. But you know, I'm we're gonna use as much discretion as we can because we don't want to kill a 10 and 2 team. Um, but there's a lot of things that have to change. What's your initial overview? Uh uh, I agree with that 100 percent Um, and this was the first time I've seen um a team get dominated in all three aspects. I mean, even special teams. Um, they this team, you know, this Eagles team got bullied, they got pushed around, they didn't play fast, they didn't play with speed, they didn't play with fire. It just looked like they were really they they, they came out, first quarter was pretty good, then it got hit in the mouth, and it was like they never recovered from that. And uh it was it was actually really sad to see. So um, you know, hopefully this is a kind of a wake up call and you know there's 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 ways that you can look at it you know you can take the good out of this and the good thing is that listen they they still in a good in a good position but it's not going to be pretty i mean they they got to they got to really dig deep and kind of self reflect and look at themselves and say you know what maybe maybe we need to respond a little bit better maybe we need to drop our balls a little bit not saying that they didn't but this team came out and just straight took it to them for for three quarters after that first quarter. So first it was really quarter. frustrating. R really frustrating. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right. So this is this first one. The the first one is uh, for 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 you. The Eagle, the Eagles D did much better against heavy motion and 
um, formation, diverse teams like Miami and the Rams, right? Held them teams to 17 points um, per team. What did shot? What did San Francisco do differently that caused so much confusion and problems for the Eagles in this game? Q? Well, it's something that we we mentioned in in the previous weeks. Um, two things, right? We we said that this team, this Eagles team, has to get out to an early lead because this this Niners team, they're not good at playing from behind, right? So they get out. Um, they get a six point lead, you know, instead of scoring two, those two touchdowns on those opening drives, now you're only up six. And so what happens is when a, a, there's an offense like this where everything looks the same, there's lots of motions, there's lots of different looks, there's zone runs, there's bootlegs, there's all these different type of things that they throw at you, they present to the defense, and it creates a situation where guys are not trusting their eyes, they're not trusting their keys, and then you get wide open players down the field. I mean, it was it was like a turnstile. It didn't matter who was in the middle of the field. Um, you know, guys were just this open, scot-free, and that's because everything looks the same. When they come out running the ball, they're getting physical, they're getting off, they're getting off the line. I mean, I saw I saw Juwan Jennings. I mean, it was actually pissing me off watching him just maul, I mean, maul our secondary in the in the in the blocking game. I mean, he reminded me of you the way you used to come off and 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 dig dig out those those safeties, man. And it was just it was just extremely, extremely frustrating. And you know, that's the, that's what happens when you play a team like this and you don't have a lead. You tend to get your eyes in the wrong spot. You tend to play flat footed. You tend to not play downhill. And so everything kind of snowballed from there. Yeah. Annoying is like kind of an understatement is get, gets you mad and frustrated to see you check just block sweat in one-on-one situations. It's, it's like, dude, you're a defensive end. That's a fullback. You got him by a good 20 pounds. Like you can't allow a tight end or fullback to be able to take you one-on-one. Yeah, that's a little chip help, but at some point he can't seal you off and you can't give up in the middle of the play. Like, I can get position on a big dude, but I should be able to hold you off for one second before you start to overpower me. You get what I mean? And, and yeah. so that type of thing was happening the entire game. Um, we were getting reached. Our defensive line wore down pretty quickly in the game. And uh, before you know it, the effort wasn't the same up front that we were used to seeing because the Niners were always in better position than us. We forgot how to stunt. We forgot how to do multiple things. And I guess it's because of zone, a zone scheme team, and they were afraid to. But this game, this type of game, I think you needed to. And they didn't do much variety up front. They were playing straight up, and they were in the same spots the entire time. It was an easy, easy blocking scheme for the 49ers as the game went on, right? So um, there's a lot of things that's frustrating, but I would say that Sean Desai needs to do a lot better going forward with, with – he has to go back to the drawing board, the drawing board. You have to evaluate your players – because now you know what the standard is. That was the best team in the NFL, right? We're not the best team in the NFL, right? The 49ers is the best team in the NFL, um, at least that we've played. Now, we don't know what the Ravens look like when we play them and those things. But they're definitely, I would say, the best team in the NFL or one of the best teams in the NFL. And that's the barometer right now. And because that is the barometer, now you got a chance to go to the drawing board and say, you know what? Let me break this down to the studs and start to figure out where I want guys. Like, why is Eli Ricks playing over Bradley Roby? I don't understand it. Everybody bullies him. He gets the ball caught on him all the time. He still can't sipe, he still can't sift through tr trash and 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 bunches. Like, I don't know. They're afraid to play off. They're playing zero coverage, like eight yards off. Like there are so many different things that that's that's just bothering me. And I think that you have to go and have a heart check with your back end and your linebacker players, right? Um, the defensive line is going to give you everything that they have. You you as a defense coordinator have to be able to put them in position, but everybody else, man, th there has to be some level of heart, number one, especially from the corner position. Seth was saying and going back and forth with Slay, there's times, man, where y'all, it's 
it's it's second and 14 and you 14 yards off. He catches the ball and gets 12 yards on a hitch route. A hitch route should be seven, eight yard catch, right? Yeah. And you you turn around, you in, you know, you in stills third and seven, third and six. You know, like he shouldn't get 12 yards on the hitch. It shouldn't happen. It shouldn't ever happen. Like, so, but you see that type of stuff. Guys just off for no reason. Nobody got the heart to step up toward the line of scrimmage. That bothers me because yeah. that means that you don't trust your ability. And we can do all the talking that we want to do, but until you can show it on tape that I'm comfortable with being in your face, did you see Severius Ward backing down from A.J. Brown? A.J. Brown got him a few times, but he got A.J. Brown a few times, and he didn't just, I'm just going to be off now. No, he like, yo, I'm gonna be, I'm here. I believe in me. I don't think our secondary believes in themselves. That's what it looks like on the tape. Yeah, yeah. And the, the right, That was part, a rant. That was a rant. No, that, that, that was perfect. It's spot on. And, you know, the key part, too, and we can go to the next, the next uh, subject, but the key part too that I noticed watching the tape today, the all twenty-two, when you watch, when you watch the Niners defense, right, the D lines coming off the ball, low, physical, extending, linebackers square, playing downhill, attacking, secondary. I mean, they're flying to the ball. I mean, any type of run, you got the five, six, seven guys from the that that Niner defense just flying to the football. And then when you watch the Eagles defense now, you see, like you said, I see the D line getting off, getting off the ball and, and trying to get there. But linebackers, flat footed, getting caught, secondary, getting pushed around, bullied around. So, you know, they they really, if if I'm if I'm the head coach of this team, I'm gonna put that, I'm gonna put that on the big screen. I'm, I'm gonna put a couple clips from both defenses and both offenses and show. Hey, what is this team doing that we're not doing? What is this team doing that we're not doing? And then hopefully that'll kind of trigger something like, hey, man, this is how you guys got to play. You got to play hungry. Yeah, the, the 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 Niners are a physical football team. Their receivers are physical. Their corners are physical. Their fullback is physical. Their tight end is physical. Everybody on their team, their receive, Debo, physical, they like contact. And they're okay with that. Our team at times does not like contact, and especially at the point of attack. You throw a receiver screen, I don't know if somebody's going to get blew up out there because they're iffy. You you throw a, a receiver screen to the 49ers, I definitely know that the first two people to the uh, point of attack, they're going to slow play it and try to let everybody else make the tackle instead of going and hitting somebody thick. That's what you have to do. You got to gotta, you gotta turn the ball in one direction, right? You can't sit there and just wait. James Bradbury, like, on the Debo screen. Like, bro, you had a two-way go. I've seen Q literally have your man is right in front of you, but you realize that the ball is not in phase, right? Yep. I can go under him and still make the tackle. He had a two-way go because there was so much space there. You can fake him outside and slip in, like, but you but you gotta want to make the tackle. You gotta want yeah. to make the tackle. Yeah. On a on a Debo reverse touchdown, there's just a simple reverse. It was first of all, the entire defense got food. Everybody, nobody's reading the guard. The linebackers, like you just going looking in the backfield. Look at the guard, son. That's your key. The guard just popped out and position block right in front of you. Go around him. Forget what's in the backfield. Your guard that's in front of you, who you get paid to freaking <laughs> read, is in front of you. Read him and go outside. Like it, it was mind boggling and frustrating. Absolutely. So frustrated. And I don't know if it's because you're young and guys not in that position or we're just not that good, but I think we're better than that. And then on that same particular play, you got Byard there, you got Slay there. Dude, I know Kittle's bigger than you. He got to run and block you too. Go and position yourself where you turn the ball back inside. It don't have to be a touchdown. You run, run and Draw your shoulder and at least you take them on and turn the ball back and it's not a touchdown. It may be down at the five, but it's not a touchdown. Yep. Just, oh. 
All right. All right. <laughs> All right here we go. Um. So All right. next. All right. This is for you. This is for you again. Yeah. Oh no 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 no. That's you. That's you. Go ahead. Sorry about that. Yeah. So <clears throat> the thirty-two yard pass to Kittle, and I got a, a play. I got that play queued up. We'll, okay. we'll, we'll look into that. But on the um the thirty-two yard pass to Kittle in the second quarter. Um, you know, actually the play action, he, he kind of leaked out um on the big play. And it kind of set up it kind of set up the go-ahead touchdown and really kind of got the ball rolling for this team. What do you think happened there and, and why do you think that that Kittle got so open on that play? Well, they're not in like they they didn't have a great game plan for four different um for for um receivers strong. They didn't have great they didn't they just have they didn't have enough people to that side. And um, and it shouldn't have been that wide open, right? Uh, I, I just think that I just think we have four strong. Your your backside safety's eyes got to be to the strong side of the field, and the people that are on the opposite side have to be know where the fourth guy is. I just don't think that they, that they did. They went straight down the field. And he just leaked that out. It was it was a simple play. It's just that they didn't have an adjustment for four strong. Every time they went four strong, it was a big play. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so and you're going to cue that up, and I want you to talk about it. All right. So here's a here's a play. Um. So it's a simple. Try not to. All right. So it's a simple. Um. Single high coverage. Okay. So no. Let's go. So they go motion here, right? So it starts in a two by two set. We got a safety. This is Bryce Brown underneath here, right? Mm -hmm. We got um, Reed. He's dropping down into the weak side right here. Yeah, so it's a, a version of cover three, backside, weak side safety. Okay. So version of cover three. Okay. Now what happens here? And and I know as a young as a young player, what can happen sometimes <clears throat> is you all week you're here. Debo, Debo, Debo. We can't let him get down the field. We gotta get hands on him. Okay. So I'm gonna back this up just a little. Oh, sorry. I'm gonna back it up just a little bit. Okay. So we got Bryce Brown here. Okay. Now he's thinking, okay, Debo, Debo. All right. So he's still in the zone. So yes, we want to get hands on this guy right here. Well, you can't vacate your zone, right? So what it happens is, and what I think happens is when this guy comes in motion. He sees Debo starting to bend across the field, all right? And now he... He takes him, man. He takes him way too far in, right? He's still... This is his area. This is his zone. And he's covering, like, all the way across the field like it's man almost. He's the flat so this defender. entire he's, zone... He's the flat defender. What's that? He's the flat exactly. defender. Exactly. Who is? He's the hook curl flat defender. Yeah, he's the hook, hook curl flat, yeah. And he's all the way here inside the hash. Okay, so what happens, he's squeezing all the way across the field and there's nobody in this zone, right? See what I'm saying? Yeah, the undisciplined. Undisciplined. All right, we can see it again right here, okay? He's hook curl, he's dropping hook, curl flat to out that way, right? The motion comes over. Boom. Eyes, eyes in the wrong spot wide open down the sideline okay and this is something he's a young player he'll he'll get that and he'll learn he, you know he got taken out of the i'll stop my, my screen share now he got taken out, out out after that play and you know probably got a stern talk, talking to on the sideline but that's the kind of stuff that young players do that's the kind of stuff that inexperienced players do mm -hmm. um and unfortunately this is the, the 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 reality of this team right now you got a lot of young guys a lot of guys that probably shouldn't be starting playing in those critical spots against the team that that's where they like to attack. And the, the sad thing about it is it happens every week. I mean, every it's single every big week, play, though. every, every single big play that they had was some version of the same thing that the, the, the commanders ran, which is the same thing that the chiefs ran, the bills ran. It's every week. It's the same stuff happening over and over again. So now it becomes okay. Now after a while, is it coaching? Right? Is it the position coach is not locking certain stuff down to where you know how it is in the league? It's a big bar on a steel league, right? If another mm -hmm. team says something that you're not going to be able to 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 stop, they're going to run it too, and they're going to test it out and see if you can stop it. And you know, there's so many. I have so many examples of same same 
different formations, but basically the same passing concepts used each week against this team, this defense. This it's 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 annoying, man. Um let's uh I'm gonna give you one two Q. All right, so this is this play here, this kind of grinded my gears a little bit here. All right, so this is the Brandon IU touchdown after after um Josh Sweat uh is in the neutral zone. We had him stop. You had him stop and you you're in the neutral zone, so now you gotta play another down, right? So the reason I bring this up is because Q was one of the best at it because anybody that's down and you're a safety and you're in an alley um, or in that, that flat area, alley area, once you re-run, you have to be aware of play action, right? And the first thing you do after play action is that you have to locate the crosser, right? <laughs> that's, the, what, that's what you do. Yep. And any bootleg, any type of play action, if you go for your run responsibility, you have to relocate and you have to to, to assess what a cross is because you know he's coming, right? Yep. That's veteran players. We got a bunch of young guys. I want you guys to watch Reed. Can you see my cursor? Yep. I want you guys to watch Reed Blankenship, right? Because they're in a version of of, of basically cover three. Basically, that's what it is, like a, like a red zone three, right? So... Brandon Ayuk is going to run across the field after after that the um the play fake. So let's watch it. Right? The play fake is happening, right? So he fakes the ball to Debo here, right? So Reed is like, I got to get to my run responsibility. All right. When he locates that it's that it's um pass, this guy's close, right? But it's okay. He recognizes that it's passed. The first thing that you do is run back to your spot and try to locate the crosser because you know now he's rolling that somebody has to come from the other side of the field to get in his vision. You know this. This is a veteran player. This is all levels of football. Any play action type of read with a boot or anything like that, he they're cutting the field off. There's a guy that's in the flat. There's a guy out wide coming back, and then there's a crosser coming right behind you. This play is day one, any football, anywhere, USA. Watch Reed Blankenship and what he does. He doesn't hustle back to his spot, right? Or he, he starts to hustle back to his spot, but he stops his feet and starts looking at the quarterback. When all you have to do is just keep running to your spot till you locate the receiver. And when you're in good position, that's when you look back, right? I'm not saying that he would have made the play, but this would have been a lot tougher play for Brandon IU if he would have did this properly. Let me show you guys again. See these, these angles here, because you're going to be able to see it on the replay. A lot of people say this wasn't a catch. Maybe it wasn't, maybe it was, but it was definitely preventable. Like, watch Blankenship right here. Look at him looking at the quarterback. Why? You're not in phase. Q used to cut me. I, I used to get so <laughs> mad in this play, because when you're in the slot, you're in a position... You have to haul tail in order to beat the guy that's in the alley. And I know that's the safety because the safety is going to go for the run fake just for a step or two. And then he's going to relocate, try to find me. So I got to like run full speed to try to beat him. But if he looks back at the quarterback prematurely, I'm going to get on the other side and it's a catch. Yep. Like all of these things, see, this is what you have. You're frustrated, but you have hope because all of these things are correct. Correctable, but we've been saying this since the beginning of the season. We've That's been good. winning, but we've been telling you guys here on this show that these things are correctable. I, I have courage, and, and and I'm encouraged at times because they're correctable. But how long before you think that man they just can't get right? Yeah. So, and it's funny you say that because this play that you're highlighting right here, you know where else we saw that play? The Chiefs. Which one? The, the Chiefs. Chiefs. The Chiefs ran the same exact concept. Uh, it looked a little different, but the same exact concept when they threw it to Christian Watson in the back of the end zone. Same yeah. safety, same position. So that's what we keep talking about. It's like it's it's the same stuff every week, every week, and it's the same plays we get keep getting attacked by. Yeah, it, it's 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 starting to get. And I listen in this tape literally. It's it's so infuriating that I'm not going to take you through line by line each one of these these points, right? But 
it's a lot of plays that are just our mistake. Q just highlighted that play. I thought you were, when you asked me that question, I, I thought you were talking about a different play. But um, Q just highlighted the George Kittle play and just a simple mistake by Sidney Brown, not understanding, just blowing the coverage, basically. Going in, he's the only person in man coverage is clearly cover three. And if he's yeah. in cover three, at least he can limit the game. Yeah. Okay. Um, but it's but it's every single time. All right. Let's get to the next one. <laughs> All right. So All right, this is me. What what was this um A plus Brock Purdy performance? Uh was this the A plus Brock uh Brock Purdy performance, Q? <laughs> or was this just too many Eagles errors and windows that he had open because of our mistakes? I mean, listening to to the radio today and 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 on the news, you would think that that Brock Purdy is 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 uh, Tom Brady the way he played. Um, I think this is more an effect of of this Eagles defense making mistakes and not getting their eyes in the right spots. Now, I do think that that Purdy is a good quarterback. I do think he has a good arm. I think he's smart. I know. I think he's accurate. Um, but. He, I don't think I saw a pass over 10, 15 yards the entire game. Um, everything just, was just the of... one, the one to McCaffrey on the um, on the the option up, the option yeah. and up. Yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah that's right. Mm -hmm. And um, so, I mean, I think I think he plays well within that system. I think that he took what the defense gave him. They manipulated some stuff to get some wide open, some wide open plays. But I think this is more, more of an indication of how far this secondary has to go to get to that level. If they play just – if you if we take half of the plays that they had mental, mental errors on, if we, take, if we take just half of those plays and they're – these players, the secondary guys are where they're supposed to be and at least in the vicinity um, of where they're supposed to be and making tackles, then I think it's a much different game. I think it's a much closer game. But um, you know, when you got Debo running reverses and and screens and taking to the house, I mean, and it's, getting it's, bullied, and, and getting turn, bullied, just, turn, just turning down tack, you're turning down contact, and that's what it, and 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 I love and listen, Bradbury Slate, y'all my peoples, I want you to succeed. The back end can't turn down tackles like this. I believe Morrow wants to tackle. I believe these guys wants to tackle. But there has to be some technique with this stuff, too. You can't just – like that's De De Debo, you, you tackling a running back, bro. You can't you can't let your feet die with him. Mm -mm. You're just not going to smack him and knock him down like as a receiver. No, you got to like – you got to get in front of him. You got to stop him with your body. He's going to deliver a blow to you. So we've been talking about McCaffrey and Debo to, to you – um, what's the defensive uh, key to defending guys like McCaffrey and Debo? I mean, they're basically like running backs and receivers kind of combined into one. Um, and think... then, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. And then it also says, do you think that the coverages were too simplified in this game? Um, Here's the thing. Like, I think Kyle Shanahan, and I told you this before, and you and la I told you last year about Kyle Shanahan. I told you, I, and yeah. you were like, I don't know. Remember that? <laughs> yeah. I like this dude. I think he's the best offense coordinator in the league. I do. I think he does. I it, it, the the reason I think it is because everything looks the same. Like he has three or four plays every game plan that I was. Let, let me say that. Let me say it the right way. He usually has three or four same like tight plays, you know, that, that look the same. Mm -hmm. Like it, it, it'll be a run. It'll be a screen. It'll be a play action and it'll be a pass. All of it the same, right? Same fake, same everything. And before you know, it, you're like, Oh, I know this play. And the third time come around and it's a big play. Yeah. And I just I like that he dresses up the details and it's the small details. You do all this window dressing just to run, you know, 95 week or do all this to to, to run a, a, a inside zone. Right. And he does all of this stuff that seems unnecessary. So when it's time for him to pass, it all looks the same. So I think that's the key is number one, they have they have 
they have superior personnel when it comes to offense and defense than most teams, right? In Debo, in Christian McCaffrey. And then you got you got like a dude that knows how to use them. Like DeAndre Swift can do everything that Christian McCaffrey can do in a passing game. Yeah. Have you seen him highlighted at all? No. I'm, te- I'm telling you, DeAndre Swift can do everything that Christian McCaffrey can do in the passing game. He literally can do that. Yep. I'm not saying that he, he has the same power and, um, you know, ability to, to break tackles like Christian McCaffrey. He doesn't. But when it comes to being an effective runner, he definitely can do that. And him being out the backfield, he can. But the offense coordinator is the, is the thing. And how do you stop Debo Samuel? You got to want to stop Debo. Because Debo is that dude that is is going to want it more than most guys that are playing in NFL. He don't like to go down. So you can't you can't hope him down. You can't wait for the entourage to come and tackle him for you. You know why? Because he's going to be faster than them. Where you where you need him down, you have to put him down. And guess what you have to do? You have to sacrifice your body in order to get him down. Got to. <laughs> Got to. And is McCaffrey special? Yeah, he's a special player. Debo is a special player. All of these dudes at the – Juwan Jennings pimp slapped the dude and went into the end zone. Ricks. <laughs> huh? Ricks. <laughs> That's what he, he pimp slapped. <laughs> yeah. All right, all right. All right. You know what's frustrating as your favorite team is losing? Trying to find a reasonable ticket online. That's why you need a game time fast that's easy to buy tickets for sporting events, concerts, and theater shows near you. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, and their best price guarantee, game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. Right now, the game time app you're two taps away from tickets to see the birds, flyers, sixers, local college hoops, the nutcracker at the Academy of Music, and the comedians at Helium. The best part is game time offers event cancellation protection, even job loss protection. Game time is the only ticket app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. They're all in prices, show you the total upfront. And you can see the view from your seat so you know exactly what to expect at checkout. Game Time is obsessed with helping you save money. They offer deals right up to the start of an event and even an hour after. They've Their zone deals let you pick the section while Game Time pick the seats to give you the best savings. The Game Time Guarantee Make sure you get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section, row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Download the game time app, create an account, use the code BIRDS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and use the redeem code BIRDS for your $20 off your first purchase. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. The Game Time app. I'm about to go download that now. Download the Game Time app. <laughs> hey, it's Jeff Mosher. I love the fall because football's back, but it's also my busiest season between work, kids going back to school, youth sports and activities. There's just not enough time, especially to make a good home cooked meal. That's why I love HelloFresh. They deliver farm fresh food with pre proportioned ingredients and seasonal recipes right to my doorstep. No more wasting time at the grocery store because America's number one meal kit helps make home cooking easy, efficient, and affordable. We don't waste time researching new recipes and planning meals. With HelloFresh, the shopping's already done. The perfect amount of ingredients arrive with step-by-step recipe cards. How efficient is that? Plus, HelloFresh saves you time and money. HelloFresh is 25% less expensive than takeout, so you'll get a home-cooked meal without digging deep into your wallet. Don't forget about taste and selection. HelloFresh makes food for meat lovers, seafood lovers, vegetarians, and those who love variety. My personal favorites are the spicy Creole stew and pecan-crusted trout, two dinners my whole family enjoyed, and we actually had time to sit down together 
and eat at the table. Go to HelloFresh.com slash 50Eagles and use the code 50Eagles for 50% off plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash 50Eagles. Use that code 50Eagles for 50% off plus free shipping. Act now for America's number one meal kit. All All right. right. Let's Let's get get to the offense. Mm -hmm. (laughs) All right. So let's talk Jalen Hurts. All right. It looked like Jalen was constantly thrown on the run. Um, He's leaving the pocket. Um, you know, even when he had uh, decent pass protection, what did you see there, um, you know, from Jalen? How did you think he played? Oh, man. Can you see that? Yeah. All right, and I, I, won't, I won't beat this up too far. Um, I'm showing a, a, a play, and this right after the touchdown. It's literally the first play after the touchdown. I want you guys to see something right here. This is annoying to me. There's two receivers up top. There is two tight ends at the bottom. You got one, two, three, four, and here's your fifth receiving target right here, right? This is a two-man route against one, two, three, four, five, six, seven defenders, Jalen has one, two, three, four, five, six seconds to make a decision to throw the ball. Why are you running a two-man route with no outlet at all? Where's the outlet for Jalen? Yeah. You got Swift right here that can run to the flat. You got two tight ends here. I know that the 49ers pass rush is pretty good. But they're not good enough for eight, eight freaking blockers against four. <laughs> there ain't a dead team in this league that needs eight people for four. It's just not. One, two, three, four. Now he's adding because he's Jalen Spy. But <laughs> that's yeah. awful. That right there is awful play calling right there. Yeah. I'm not saying that Brian Johnson is awful play caller, but this particular play is awful play calling in this situation. I don't care what route it is on the backside. And the concept wasn't that good too. It was basically um two a two guy like post in a in a dig right here. That wasn't that great a concept. If you're gonna go a two-man route, you have to attack one side, right? So it would be like a 77 concept. One dude runs a post toward the back, of, I mean, a, a corner to the back pylon, and another guy goes 15 yards and runs it toward the front or or lower, right? That type of thing. This here is not it. Yeah. All right. So, Jay, and Jalen still got to get rid of the ball, but who is going to get rid of the ball? Yeah. There's no outlets. <laughs> Just hustle out and throw it into to the, to the side or throw it in the dirt. But that's bad. Yeah. That's that's real yeah. bad. Yeah. I just want to show yeah. you. Saw, it happened a few times. I saw that play. I'm like, that's not their normal mo. I mean, that's like a North Turner type offensive play right there. Yeah, but but, but North Turner is going to have a concept that makes sense though. Yeah, <laughs> you, like a, a a dig route from the from number two and whatever number one was doing. I can't see it on that. Uh, you can't. I couldn't see it on the. Um, on the, on the copy that I was that I was watching, um, but yeah. yeah, all right. So 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 that was part of part of part of J- Jalen didn't have as many outlets as as he needed, and 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 the concepts weren't the best this game. They weren't the best this game. Yeah, the offensive line gave him time. Yeah, and that's why I don't know why you need eight blockers. You need eight blockers Not for nothing. I agree. Yeah. I agree, man. All right, All right go ahead. See the next one. <laughs> this is a tough one, man. I feel bad. But this is – this is, it was ugly, man. It was ugly. Yeah. Which which one we on? Okay. Is this, was this me right here? Yeah. Um, I'm going to take yours because you took mine that first one, okay? <laughs> um. 
What did the 49ers defensively do to the Eagles to hold them to 2.6 yards of carry? They didn't do anything spectacular from what I saw. I mean, I mean, I just I felt like this this front, this front, first of all, you got you got Greenlaw for most of the, you know, most of the first half. Um, you got Wal you got Warner. Warner. You got a tremendous D defensive front. You got got you got safeties rolling into the box and everyone was playing downhill. That to me was the 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 biggest difference. I don't think that this team did anything. I don't think you know. I I have a lot of respect for Coach Wilkes. I I played under him in Carolina. Great coach. Um, but I don't think scheme wise that he brought anything new or or crazy. Um, he did do some stuff that other teams have done against this offense, but in the run game, I, it it was pretty basic to me. I mean, it, it they. Their front just got off the ball. They didn't move. They didn't move. And the linebackers played downhill across the line of scrimmage. The other part of it, too, is we only ran the ball. We ran Swift six times. Yeah, it was only six times. Gangwell two times. Yeah. Boston Scott one time, right? So, you know, obviously, if you're holding them to 2.6 yards of carry, you, you're not – you're not committed to the run. And I think that was a huge, huge mistake not to be, to stay committed to the run. Even if you're only getting two or three yards a pop, what that does is it slows those linebackers down from getting into their drops. It makes them take that little half a second where they have to make sure they're reading run pass before, you know, they, they, they diagnose it before they get out of there. Right. So what happens is you go completely away from the run game. So now the linebackers aren't respecting it. So now that that shuts down your passing game, right? So because they you know, can just, drop, I, they can drop deeper, and they were rushing four, so they got seven defenders the entire time with deeper linebackers. Exactly, and that's a recipe for disaster. And exactly what we got. You got to stay committed to the run, even if, even if you're only getting a few yards of pop. Because what that does is it makes them think. It makes the linebackers think. It makes those guys that are dropping into the underneath areas. It makes them hold for that split second. And you know, I mean, with with uh, Smitty and and um, and AJ, all they need is a split second, a little bit of separation. Jalen get that ball in there, but it just didn't didn't happen. Yeah, we need guys, and I and I and I've said this before. We need guys that can get the play started, and that's the thing that you see about. You see, for the Niners, you got Juwan Jennings, who's a, who's a, a goon. He's a goon playing receiver, right? You have Ushek that can get the play started. You have uh, Kittle that can get the play started. What do I mean? You can throw a screen or reverse or a jet sweep or some type of toss to the running back. We're not effective in those plays consistently. Not all the time. Devontae had a good one, but we're not we're not effective consistently enough to be a um to have a make to make it a compliment to the run game. So at times when your run game is struggling, we're still making the linebackers and the cornerbacks go out there and tackle people. Yeah. Right. They knew that our edges are not, we don't like to tackle out there. So let's get out there as much as we can. Yep. Right. So we have to make that a strength on our part, too. So we got to get Julio. Somebody has to be an enforcer. We need a receiver that's enforcer. A.J. Brown can be a enforcer. But do you want Debo? You do, want, do you want Debo out there trying to block when you when he need the ball? A.J. Brown is one that need the ball. Him and Devonta need the ball. So whoever else you playing out there, Quez, Lamade, Julio, they got to, like, be forceful. And I think that adds to the run game. And also some creativity, yeah. some misdirection, some, some – some, that's the one thing that you saw the game when you're looking back. It's like once one, one team has a lot of creativity in offense and the other team does not. <laughs> it's crazy. I didn't yeah. really see a lot of uh, the kids either. He didn't, I didn't see him on the field a whole lot. No, nah, well, it was Quiz. Quiz was back up. Yeah. Yeah, quiz is back up. Let's see. All right. Let's keep going. Mm -hmm. Um so okay, so was this game where Dallas Goddard's presence was missed or did it not matter? 
if, if that were whether Dallas played or not, we we're going to get spanked like this. Yeah. Like I said, Dallas is one of those guys that can get the start to begin. He's better with the ball in his hands, right? And and can some of those slip screens and things like that be be beneficial with Dallas? Yeah, I do. I think he we would have played a little bit better, but. Dallas is not 23 points special. Yeah. He's a special player, but 23 points, it's very, very hard for one player to account for 23 points. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but having an extra target, somebody else that can get open and can run the middle of the field, all those things definitely – but here's the thing. Whether our defense would have played assignment pure or not, they would still win this game because our offense went out there and laid the egg. Yeah. You drive down the field the first two drives. You go three and out like the next three drives while they're scoring. Bad penalties in situations on third downs. One was third and seven. You turn it into a third and 12, third and six, turn into a third and 11, third and 12. Like it, it was always something in the drive that we had late in the game was aided. Two of our drives were just aided by penalties that they made, that they committed. It wasn't that we were moving the ball great. It's just that they had 30 yards worth of penalties on those drives. That's so, yeah, so, so they dominated us, dominated us up front and we got to go to the drawing board too. And you know, you know what I think we need? We need probably senior we probably need senior advising when it comes to offense and defense. Like bring somebody in in house that has a lot of experience in the type of offense that you run, not to tell people what to do, but just to advise. So you can have a good sense of how to detail these game plans and also solutions for Kyle Shanahan because his dad's been around doing this stuff for a long time. So there's somebody that's played against him. Like, so you probably need some senior advising in the building. That's a good point. That's a good yeah. Point. Yeah. They've done that before, right? Didn't they? Uh, They've had Marty year. in in that situation. They've had a bunch of people in that situation. Dick Fan Vic Fangio. Yeah, They've yeah. had a bunch of people. That's actually a good. That's a good yeah. suggestion, man. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Where we at? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, it's, my, it's, on, it's on me. The Eagles come out passing, uh, had 17 pass call, first 25 plays. Did that, Did this surprise you? And uh, Swift running backs wasn't in the rotation as well. Yeah, I mean, we just kind of, I don't want to kill it. Kill it but, I, you know, I was I was surprised by that. And, and like you said, too, the lack of creativity and misdirection. Um, you know, for this for this team, and maybe maybe it's something. Maybe you know, this was a game where, you know, maybe you don't want to show too much. Um, well, you know, at some point we're going to see them in the playoffs, right? Nah. At some point we're going to see them. So maybe this is a situation. I'm just come on, man, give me. All right, nah, okay, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as, a, as an offensive, I know you guys, offensive guys, don't do that, but like, as from my defensive mind, I'm like maybe that's what's going on. Maybe they're just hiding, hiding some of their special play. <laughs> Nah. for the next meeting no let me tell you something <laughs> when you got it when you got it you're trying to score 50 on every team on offer and what you do is that you with the next time you play them you just create little changes subtle changes right so instead of running it this way we run in a different formation instead of running an out we run it out and up instead of running the slant we run the sluggo you know you just change it up, you change the formations, right? There's always nuance that you can create, but you're trying your best to destroy every team. So they weren't holding back at all. It's just that they could, they were strapped up. Man. I, that's, I that's can't, not... I can't give you the out. Can you... <laughs> no. It's disheartening. <laughs> yeah, they were strapped up. That's what happened. They had the seatbelts on. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. All right, let's keep, let's keep going, Q. Um, make sure you guys check out Long Trampoline Park in Denver, New Jersey. That's my place. Come by, bring your kids, have a birthday party, eat some pizza, jump on the trampolines, laser tag, rock climbing, Ninja Warrior. A um, lot of things we do. Um, there are kids' playground. We do a bunch of things. Make sure you check out Long Trampoline Park in Denver, New Jersey. 
All right, Q, before we get out of here today, we got a week of all weeks coming. Dallas is coming in town. Dak may be the MVP leader right now. Most passing touchdowns in the National Football League. Only six interceptions. Playing really great. CeeDee Lamb is having a Pro Bowl type of a year. 190 yards passing last time he played us. Micah Parsons seals the game the other night. Tough matchup between them and the Seahawks. They ended up um, overcoming the Seahawks and showing up in critical moments. Dallas did. What are we looking forward to against Dallas? And will we be prepared against a team that literally had our had us beat but gave it away, coughed it up late in that game? Do you think that we can beat Dallas on the road? Um. <laughs> If we if we play defensively like we played, not even last week, but the first time we played against Dallas, it's gonna it's not gonna be pretty. Um, they're, they're, Dallas is playing great at home, and I as much as I hate to say it, they they look like world beaters when they're at home. Um, the good thing is a lot of times when you have a game like this, it kind of brings everybody down to earth, right? We when we talked about this before. We knew that during this stretch. It was going. It was going to be a tough four game stretch, and they're they're kind of on the back end of it now. So they got through the the meat part of it, right? So I think that they, you know, they only dropped one game during that 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 tough stretch in the middle of in the middle of the uh, middle of the season. Mm -hmm. So this game is still huge because there's a lot of implications tied to it. But I all I want to see from this team is I want to see them number one come out with fire. I want to see them come out ready to play. I want to see them come out angry, pissed off. I want to see them come out and and play football like your life depending on it, right? Play play this game like it's the last game you ever play. I don't know if we saw that last week from this 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 team against the Niners. They didn't come out ready to play. I think that that's the most important part of this game is how are they going to respond to this loss? How are they going to pick themselves up off the ground and get ready to go? That's what I want to see. And I don't care, you know, I, I I want them to win. But more importantly for me, I just want to see how they respond after getting their butts with last week. And, yeah. and I hope I hope that this team brings it because that's all our, that's all that they really yeah. need to do right like, now. Like, here's the thing. I, and here's the thing that, like, Q, I think you're getting in. I, I want the Eagles to win against the, the Cowboys, right? And it'll be a tough matchup because, again, Ferguson is turning into a revelation for them. And the tight end has a nice little wiggle to his game, which was yeah. a problem for his last time. C.D. Lamb, um, all of these guys are, are are starting to come on. Pollard's starting to get his legs. Like, there's there's a lot of things that that's, that's, that's happening. Brandon Cooks is starting to show up on tape. So they're a good team. But because of this 49ers game, like you said, I just believe that you just put on tape you getting your somebody going into your pocket and taking your money and you didn't fight. That's what I'm worried about. That's the part, like, because are you talented enough to win? Yeah. But you can't allow people to punk you. And I don't know when the last time I've seen the Eagles team get punked. That's like, we've been small. Like you go back to those Andy Reid teams, like when you, yeah. when the other team come out and then we came out, it looked like it was two different football <laughs> teams out there. You remember Keith Adams? <laughs> oh yeah. I remember we played the Raiders one time. And I was like, yo, bro, do we just look like like Pop Warner <laughs> to compare to them? Like every, all the receivers were like 6'4", and they had Nandi out there. I was like, yo, this is crazy. <laughs> Nandi out there, I was like, this is crazy. But we, met, but we used to go after these teams because we had hearts of lions. And that's the eagle way. That's how Philadelphia has always been. It's not only with the Eagles, it's with every sports team and the people in the city. You may be bigger, you may be faster, you may be smarter, but you step in my face, somebody get knocked out, Tifa gonna fly. And I think our team needs that. And I think that'll be enough to beat Dallas 
But if I can see them fight and want to tackle and want to be there and play aggressive, I'm happy. Yeah. 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 So. Let's go. They need, what they need to do. Hey, they need to. By the way, Big Dom, hey, listen, man. If you need, listen, man, I'm a phone call away, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm, on, I'm close to the West Coast. I'll fly to San Francisco right now. I'll find Green Law. I'll <laughs> take him out for you, bro. Just let me know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dom out there. Dom getting his skirmishes on the sideline. I'm like, Dom, get your butt back, man. What are you doing? But here's the truth. Dom was trying to break it up. He wasn't yeah. trying to get in about anybody's face. Greenlaw took it a little bit far. But even then, referees, what are you getting out of the game, bro? <laughs> Nobody should have been ejected for this. That was crazy. I'm man. convinced that referees need to at least hang around a bunch of black dudes. <laughs> <laughs> Go to LA Fitness. <laughs> 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 go to LA Fitness and just go and, and, and go and look at the game. It, like, just it, it's gonna be a lot of stuff talking. Know that you can de-escalate the situation without throwing people out. Right? It was just normal. It was normal stuff. Right? It was normal stuff. He put a little hand out there. He good. All right, take that out if you need to. <laughs> I remember you used to go play at the one in uh. The one hey, in, uh, Turnersville. in Turnersville, man. Yeah. Those fights all the time in there, man. But <laughs> you keep, it you never keep, got you too crazy. Moving. Yeah, you, 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 just fine. Just chill. Like, you need – the referees need, like, need some, some training. Yeah. <laughs> they need some training. All right? So, just take it easy, referees, with the whistles, man. Yeah. Under, like, just chill in that situation. Greenlaw shouldn't have been ejected at all. He should have got his penalty, and that was it. That was all it. right. <laughs> Hopefully the Eagles can respond and beat the Cowboys. Um, and to everybody that's out there, this is a reality check. The team is still good enough to win. The one thing that we cannot be, though, and win the Super Bowl is 30th in passing, pass defense. Can't be. We can't be 30th. I, I, there has never been a team in the history of the NFL that's been 30th in the pack against the pass that won the Super Bowl. You just can't. You can't play, you can't play, you can't play like that. And uh so we get we gotta solidify this. And for 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 goodness sake, can y'all play Bradley Roby, please? I'm not saying he's a savior. He's older. But get Byard in there, get these old, you got an old secondary, put them in there and let them figure it out. They're going to be the ones that figure it out first and then you can re-implement Sidney Brown and re-implement Eli Ricks once they solved it and, and figured it out. They may be out play when it comes to athleticism, but they're going to have the best chance to figure this out. But Byard Blankenship, Slay, Bradbury, and Bradley Rope. Those that's that's your team right there on the back end. Yeah. The other combinations, let them flow in and out, but let them figure out the system and then relay it to the young dudes. Please yeah. stop putting these young dudes in these situations. Stop. Yeah. It ain't worth the entire damn year. Stop it. I agree. All right. That's my last thing. <laughs> No, that's it, man. That was perfect. All right. All right. You you got the last word. Thank you to oh, before I give you the last word. Thank yeah. you to everybody yeah. for tuning in the show. Email your questions to inside the birds at gmail.com to Adam and Jeff and everybody. We thank you guys. Q, you got the last word. Yeah, that's it, man. Hey, listen. Got one, got one more next week. Put this one, like we used to always say, man. Watch the tape, digest it, get back to work, man. And that's it. And so, you know, we'll we'll, we'll We'll see everybody back next week and hopefully celebrating a good win.